So hello everybody, my name is Dr John Batten, I'm a senior lecturer in sport and exercise psychology and the subject group lead for sport and exercise sciences at the University of Winchester. In this short interview today I'm going to be talking to Dr Keith Parry who's a former colleague of mine at Winchester and now the Deputy Head of Department for Sport and Event Management at Bournemouth University. So welcome KP, it's great to have you with us today. Hey John, thanks, it's great to be with you too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get together and do these more formally in person in due course. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so, so today, KP, as you know, we're going to be talking about your recent publication in Academia Letters, which I was fortunate enough to actually collaborate with you on. Um, so the title of this publication is The Shifting Media Discourse Surrounding Head Injuries in Association Football. So I wonder if you could just start, KP, by talking to us a little bit about this research. Yeah, so uh, this built on some other papers that uh, we published and some other research that looked into how media reports on head injuries and, and concussion and brain injuries in football have, have been uh, received and how uh, media are reporting on those. Um, and we found that a few years ago, so back in 2018, there was an instance in the uh, Champions League final uh, and there was a concussion uh, diagnosed after the event of concussion in this game uh, that was met with uh, a lot of scorn and a lot of um, uh, questioning as to whether it was a concussion and as to whether it influenced the performance. And so we, we wrote a paper, as you know, you're on this as well with us, John. Um, we wrote about this and how the media portrayed that. Um, and in the interim period, we'd noticed that there was perhaps a shift in this, in the attitudes and the way that media were reporting it and the way that people's attitudes towards co concussion had changed. Uh, and so what we do in this latest paper is to look and try and show evidence for this shift uh, and to try and work out where that's come from and, and how um, things have changed. Uh, so we, we took some incidents that came two years later in 2020 uh, and compared how they were treated by the media and, and also talk and think about the public reaction towards these. So we've got a two year difference, um, but quite a big shift in, in the attitudes and in the way that things were reported. Perfect. So what is it you think may have caused uh, some of these shifts in the attitudes, KP? Uh, interesting question. There's uh, there's a few things. One, the from a football perspective, there's been a couple of high profile deaths of, of what we'd call national heroes uh, and others who are, are suffering now with dementia in particular. So I think it's more in the public consciousness and we're starting to realise that it's important or that's significant because these these national icons, these heroes, these World Cup winners in uh, in the case of, of English football um, are, are starting to die or are starting to come forward and say that they've got problems that they're linking directly to football uh, and particularly heading or footballs. Um, but there can be other injuries as well. So it's in the public conscious a lot more. Um, we're realising that the even small uh, impacts, so heading the re football repeatedly, can cause really severe uh, later in life um, difficulties. Um, all sorts of neuro, uh, all sorts of neuro <laughs> neurological, all sorts of head and in brain injuries. Uh, I'm struggling to get any words out today. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they can lead to these um, traumatic brain injuries, these uh, uh, issues um, in later life. Um, so, so that's one thing. Uh, I think we've also seen a bit of a shift in society uh, where we're moving away from the traditional sort of warrior narratives that you see in sport, where um, men in particular are meant to sacrifice their body and they're meant to just give everything for the sport. And you, you don't leave anything, uh, you leave everything out on the field as such. You, you play through pain, you're expected to do that. And we've seen a, a shift and a question in that. Perhaps it's generational, um, perhaps it's just how society is evolving, we're perhaps coming even more civilised than we were before, perhaps. Um, but we're seeing a move away from that and recognising that we, we shouldn't do that, that it's not great to, to play through injuries, to put your body on the line, is is not something to be valorised and to be hero heroised, but it's something to challenge and to say, well, really, why are we doing that? That's a really bad example we're setting for other people. Yeah, thank you, KP. So, uh, as you noted, there's obviously been a lot of public discussion around concussion in, in, in football recently, and you've highlighted some of the socio-cultural uh, factors which may have contributed to, I guess, some of these shifting narratives that, that you've reported in the paper. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of what, you know, what we should do with this research, so but really, who, who do you think should be really interested in this research paper? Well, I mean, really, everyone should be. Uh, the, there's hopefully a shift that we're seeing here as well in terms of seeing this as a sport problem 
uh, and just something to do with footballers and so forth, and recognising that this is this is a public health crisis, that the amount of people involved in playing sport, particularly ones such as football or rugby and uh, in the States, American football, where where we're seeing these contacts, these, um, these traumatic brain injuries, it's a vast number of people. So anyone playing the sport should be interested in it. But the wider public should be uh, interested in it as well and should start to question whether this is appropriate, whether we should be doing this, whether we, we should allow particularly children children to be playing some of these sports. Uh, if you think about football, where until recently young children could head the ball many, many times in practice as well as in the games, rugby where children are tackling each other, American football where, yeah, they've got helmets, but the practice was to get two small children to run into each other and uh, and to sort of prepare for the tackles in that way, sort of colliding, uh, heads colliding with each other. That I think everyone should be questioning those practices. So we've got people playing sport, people, the wider public, also then journalists um, and anyone involved in the sports media, because they need to be thinking about how they report on these head injuries and on concussions, whether they're doing so in an appropriate and responsible way. So um, pretty, as I've said, really, it's it's everyone. I mean, why would you not be, be worried about that if you're a parent, if you're playing sport, if you're reporting on sport, if you have an interest on sp in sport? Yeah, I think everyone should be taking note of this. Yeah, thank you, KP. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the media because that was going to be my, my next question in terms of where do we go from here? Obviously, the, the focus of the article was around shifting media discourse. And I know you've been involved in doing some work with, with the media and, and training journalists. So I wonder if you could just talk to maybe some of the work you've been doing or, or kind of future directions in this area as well. Yeah, certainly. So uh, some of the work that we're doing is, is looking to try and do some of what I've said before and, and educate journalists on how they should report on this. Um, in the past, you see reports about someone uh, being or getting a bit of a ding to the head or being a bit banged up and uh, being unsteady on their feet and playing through it. Um, or they would valorise it and say, oh, yes, he, he suffered a, an injury and, and played through it. And that's great. And it shows everything that's good about sport. So we're, we're trying to get journalists and, and those involved in the sport media to to understand that they have a responsibility to report in a in an uh, in an appropriate manner so not valorizing those behaviors uh, not writing this off as insignificant which we saw was the case in many instances two years ago or well, it's three years from now um, and so they need to understand that these are significant so part of the work that i'm doing now is involved with trying to educate journalists and sports journalist students uh, to to understand how they should in a responsible way report on head injuries concussion brain injuries and so forth so training them um, we're also as we've done here looking at the coverage to see if we can provide further evidence of this shift which we think is there in terms of reporting uh, to give you an idea in in this case there was two players who came together and suffered a head injury one stayed on the pitch and played on uh, and a lot of members of the press criticized that decision whereas previously they'd have uh, valorized him for staying on and playing through the pain as such uh, so we can show that there's been this shift in uh, shift in reporting behavior uh, which is evidence i guess of a change in perceptions and changing understanding of a concussion and brain injuries and so on. So we're trying to document that as well as educate the current generation of journalists and also the, the, the upcoming generations of, of journalists as well when they report on sport um, and more broadly as well. You see it not just in sport, but you know, we see this issue with, with veterans, with um, stunt people in movies and, and so forth. So it's uh, it goes a lot broader than just sport, I think. Yeah, thank you very much, KP. Uh, obviously, as, as a collaborator, I'm somewhat biased, but I think this is a fascinating body of work which holds uh, a lot of future potential. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back in the future to talk about some of those uh, projects that you're currently undertaking and, uh, and some of the future developments that are in place. But that brings us to a close today in terms of this short research interview. Um, for those of you who are interested, I will post a link to the full article uh, in the description uh, that accompanies this video. But thank you very much for your time today.